All right, guys. Today is a very exciting day. If you guys didn't know, the other day I did a video where I went ahead and I removed some components off a board. Somebody told me that maybe the way of doing it currently using solder wick is maybe a little bit dated. I don't completely disagree with them, but maybe there is a better way. I didn't use the solder sucker because me, uh, I just haven't had very good luck with these things over the years. They're very particular, they're kind of bulky. By the time you have to play around going from one to the other, you've already heated up the board maybe more than you need to. I decided to go ahead and invest into a Hakko, but not the model that was recommended to me. I instead went to the FR410. This guy is gonna be my benchtop unit for removing components from PCBs. This is probably one of the best solder suckers that I've seen online but there's not very many videos on it. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys what comes in the box for the Hakko FR410. Got a manual. Now there's two different variants of the Hakko FR410. There's one variant that uses the gun, like this one here, which man, that is a nice feeling gun. And there's the other that uses the pencil style. And I've got an example of a pencil style over here. but. Just for comfort's sake, I decided to go with this format right here. We're going to see how that plays out in just a moment. I'll tell you, first impressions, uh, there's a little bit of a seam in between the clamshell of this gun. But other than that, it honestly feels like a well-made component. Everything feels nice and quality. So that's the gun. Power cord. Sure that's going to be essential. Oh. It's got a tool kit, I imagine. Holy cow, there's a lot of stuff that comes inside this kit. And, all right, and here's the base unit itself. Right, here we go. And I'll tell you, my first impressions of the base unit is that this guy is a little bit stout. He's a he's a little bit heavy there. So this should be the stand. Yeah, that's definitely you can see that there's a transformer in the rear of it, because as soon as I go to pick it up, it wants to tilt to the back. It's a rather heavy little unit. Packing stuff and packing stuff and packing stuff. There's so many little pieces to this kit. Alright, so here is the stand. And I assume. Okay. I guess that's simple enough. I wish there's something more. There's one fastener right back here. All right, so there's two little tabs in the front of the stand. There's one fastener in the rear, and you just screw it in, and everything's stable. All right, that's way easier than I thought it was gonna be. And here is a cleaning sponge. Hmm. I'm not a big fan of uh, using liquid sponges for cleaners. I'd rather stick something like that in there. <laughs> this is one of my old uh, metallic um, tip cleaners. All right, guys. Let's take a look at what comes in the kit. So this is a Hakko tool kit that comes with it. And I assume that this got your different tips. Oh, jeez. I don't want to spill pieces all over the place. There we go. All right. So this is one of the things I really like about the Hakko unit itself is that I have this 
tip changer. And the tip changer is really kind of cool because it's got a silicone sleeve around it. And when you have the gun, you want to change the tip. If it's really hot, you just put this down, you grab onto it, and you can twist it. And look at that. The tip comes right off. It's a quarter turn, and the tip holder comes off, and bam, you can pop a new tip in. And then you quarter turn it. Yep. And then back on. Oh, that was way easier than I thought. So I've got several different filters. And these are going to be for inside the gun. Which there's none in the gun currently. So in the gun, we pull down on this. And it ejects it. Okay, there's the filter. It's in the very back of the container. There's a splash cup. So as it sucks the solder in, it's going to hit that splash cup and solidify. And one of the things I really dig about the Hakko is supposedly it runs the pump for a second before it opens the valve, which builds up all your uh, vacuum, and then it instantly lets it go. So you're going to have a, a massive amount of vacuum. And the other thing is it heats the entire tip, not just the very end, but the whole nozzle is going to be heated. So that makes sure that your solder doesn't solidify halfway down the tube, which is a problem with some of the other units. You can see I've got a paste unit over here. I don't know if I'll turn that guy on, but maybe to compare and contrast. So the reason that I chose this particular model is because I really dig the stand and how the gun just kind of sits in there ready to go. Let's put the kit back. I've got a very fine flat blade that's going to be used for something. I'll probably have to read up on that. I've got a tip cleaner right here and it's got a tiny, tiny, like half a millimeter drill bit. And this is going to be to, to manually clean out the tip. And I've got a one millimeter rod right here and I believe that this is to shove down the tip to uh, clean out any debris that does form in there. Very cool. Alright guys, so that is the tool kit. Go ahead and pack this guy back up. I probably will not be changing tips very often. So the hoses themselves feel like they're silicone, which is really good because then you don't have to worry about burns from your soldering iron or from your gun. Typical PVC style tips, you have to worry about burns. Okay, there's that guy in. All right, well, that doesn't go on too easily, but there it is. Man, let's go ahead and power this guy up. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on. All right, so immediately I can tell it's set in Fahrenheit. I do know that I can change that, and I probably will change that because everything else I'm doing is in centigrade. All right, so it looks like it's coming up the temperature. It's just about done. Excellent. So that little chirp means that it's ready. Let's go ahead and get her done. So I've got this little thermal fuse right here. I'm going to want to try and change this guy out. So, wow. I just witnessed it suck all the solder that was on the tip. Let's just see how well it does. Wow, that actually did a really good job. I'm very surprised. Wow, that is completely clean. Oh, that's so wild. Can I, ow, oh, that's the stupidest thing I've done today. All right, 
let's desolder some of these wires right here. Right, I'm going to desolder this plug. Holy cow. Okay, so let's go ahead and get this wire. That is so wild. Let's see if I can get it in frame for y'all. Holy cow. And it is free. Let's go ahead and desolder that wire right there. That is so cool. All right, guys, I'm a believer. I am a believer. So let's see, I've got a little thermostat right here, or a thermistor. It's gonna be probably sensitive to temperature. Oh my gosh, look at that, it just falls right out. Holy cow. Okay guys, I'm a believer. I am an absolute believer. So um, here's the thermal fuse that I was gonna pull out earlier. Look at it, it just falls right off. Holy cow, that was way too easy. Let me see if I can get another circuit board. All right, so what I'm doing is I'm stripping off a USB port because this is an example of some of the things that I do repair. So you see this big honking double USB port right here? This guy right here is a very good example of what commonly happens is you're going to get a damaged port, something's going to crush it or something's going to snap off inside. I got to change it out. So let's see how long it takes me to change out a USB port. First I'm going to do the pins. I'm getting like a hundred percent success rate so far. I'm obviously not even going as fast as I probably could. Okay, let's see what's going on. Oh my gosh, all the solder in the splash cup. Man, this guy is just a champ. So, right from the beginning, I'm thinking that maybe the tip is a little bit clogged. And that would have been my fault. So all I'm doing is running the wire through, checking it out, making sure it's nice and clean, which it is. I can pop this guy back in and continue going. Look at that. That's so cool. All right, let's do it. All right, so the reason it's taking me so long is because of my own technique. And now, after I've gotten the pins undone, next is going to be the retaining lugs, which are on the sides. So normally, I would switch to a larger tip. But it appears this kit didn't come with any larger tips. Hmm. Well, that's a shame. You would think, if you spend that kind of money on a machine, that you get some larger tips. I'll have to read it, make sure that I got everything I'm supposed to. But a larger tip or two would definitely be nicer than this guy. I can't tell you that it's 
an absolute pleasure to use, man. Cleans those pins pretty clean. <laughs> Only thing that's taking me so long is me. <laughs> Too much coffee today. I can really see when it activates and it sucks the solder really hard. <laughs> All right. So cleaning off the pins is the hardest part and it does that really well. And the only thing I have remaining is going to be those hold down lugs to which the tip that came with the unit is not big enough to handle it. So I'm going to have to get some more tips for this guy. Hako. I'm very upset that you guys did that. I should have had more tip options. Okay. Some of the pins did not come completely clean. Most of them did. And this guy is very hot. So I'd have to let that cool down. So for me to remove this from this point on, I would have to solder wick the retaining lugs on the corners and then the USB port would just pop right off. It works much better by getting a firm down press. There it goes. Works much better by placing the board straight on the work surface and pressing down. Yeah, there it goes. So it would be my technique that needs to change. Excellent. I'm cleaning up these last couple pins that were being a little pain. And I can see it liquefying much better by me getting the down press. Oh yeah, much better. Anyway guys, it seems to be an excellent system. It really worked well on this one. And if I have problems like with this, then more than likely I would come through with a leaded solder and add a little bit more solder to each tip. And then go ahead and use the solder sucker and suck it out. Some of these, there's not enough solder to get a good contact. If you don't get good contact, you're not going to get good thermal transmission and it's not going to melt the solder completely. So some of these, I would probably have to add a little bit of solder just to make the gun work a little bit better. But that is the Hako FR410 with the gun option. Now the other option that I mentioned is that it, it could come with a pencil configuration, which is like this one here. The pencil configuration, you have to really get in there and it does kind of block your view because your hand and the gun are going to be right over the area that you're looking, which is one of the reasons why I like this style because you can hold your hand off to the side and see exactly where you are. I love the cradle. I love the way that it sits in here. Clean the tip, hang it up, shut it off. Too easy. Love it. All right, guys, this Hako FR410 desolder station. I love it. It's my favorite component on my test bench now.